This is Ria. Welcome to Little Stories for Tiny People. A little over five years ago, I shared a story called The Gnome and the Seed. It's one of my favorites from the early days of the podcast. If you haven't heard it, check it out. I have wanted to revisit the world I created for that story for a while now. Today is the day. Our story is about another young gnome who must learn an important lesson as he takes his first steps into adulthood. Let's hear it. It's called The Reluctant Garden Gnome. Take it away, Libby. Remember, there are no pictures, so you will have to imagine them in your mind. You can imagine them however you want. Okay, here we go. Welcome to Perspicity Woods' annual seed ceremony. May the recipients of this year's fine batch of seeds unleash the teeming potential within each of them and grow a goose worthy of a gnome's work. Excuse me, a garden. I don't think you'll be able to grow a goose. Let us begin. Every seven-year-old gnome in Perspicity Woods was lined up ready to receive a single seed, the humble start to the gardens they'd tend to for the rest of their lives. Prickly Parsnip, please step forward. There you are. Willis Flytrapminster, step up now, please. My goodness, treat it kindly, my dear. That's your future in your hands. The gnome we've got our eye on, Nem, was last in line. But if the students had been ordered by achievement, he'd have been first. Since he began school at the ripe age of one, he'd excelled. He was tops in math, reading, candle making, treehouse construction, and all the rest. Carlotta Thistletree, please step forward. Stand up straight, my dear. Nem heard a rustling from his shoulder. Mo, what are you doing up there? Hmm? I'm reading the latest issue of Treetop Newsweek. Wait, what day is it? Nem heard his beetle fold the magazine. Seriously? (gasps) Oh, seed ceremony. Of course. It's not like it's the most important day of my life or anything. Oh, don't be so. And lastly... Nem Weeblemish. Mo hushed as Nem stepped forward to receive his seed. The school director dropped it into his hand. Nem allowed it to sit there on his palm, exposed as he took a seat. His tummy roiled. Would you look at that? It's so small, yet it holds your whole life inside it. Hmm. Thank you, everyone, for coming. I've prepared a speech. Let me just... The director withdrew a curl of paper from her pocket. She lifted her reading glasses from the lanyard around her neck. You will sleep well tonight. Oh, excuse me. Uh, That's from the fortune cookie I had last night. I slept rather poorly, in fact. Now then. The gnomes in the audience shifted in their seats. The announcer fished a curl of paper from her other pocket. Congratulations, seven-year-old gnomes. We wish you much luck and good fortune as you create your bright futures as garden gnomes. The crowd was quiet. That was the end of my prepared remarks. Please clap. The young gnomes filtered down from the platform and dispersed into the surrounding forest. They were anxious to get to work. Gnomes love to work. Nem stepped down from the platform, staring at the seed in his hand. 
He was in no hurry. I can't get over it. Every success you'll experience will come from that little guy right there. Every... Mo. Hmm? I need a minute. Nem heard Mo get out his magazine. It was a warm day in the forest. The trees were lush with green. The sun sent shafts of light in a lovely pattern across the ground. Once the small crowd made their way out of the clearing, the sounds of the forest came to the surface. Nem closed his eyes, letting the breeze drift over him and the sounds of the birds fill his ears. The seed sat on the flat of his palm. Nem imagined it blowing away with the breeze. So are we going to go plant that seed, or... Nem blinked against the bright sun. There were so many things he wanted to say. He waited a minute, allowing the urge to say them aloud to pass. Let's go. Nem closed his fist around the seed, and they set off into the forest. Nem had been walking nearly an hour, with Mo periodically muttering in his ear, Do you think you can install a water feature? I'd love to have a fountain. Maybe a pond? I know it's not the number one priority or anything, but maybe it could be third on the list. When he came upon an older gnome busily inspecting the leaves of a flowering plant. That'll be you someday. Can you believe it? I still can't quite believe it. It feels like just yesterday that- Mo. Hmm? Shh. Hello, Nem said to the gnome, who whipped around, grinning. Hello there, young fella. And hello to you, Beetle. Nem didn't have to see Moe's reaction to know he was overwhelmed at being acknowledged. Hello. You've got a beautiful garden, Nem said. It was true. The gnome had a lovely garden, with flowering trees and plants, rows of vegetables, and nut trees. It's not bad, the gnome said. I'm, uh... Well, I'm seven, Nem began, feeling foolish. Of course he was seven. He didn't even have a beard. Uh, I'm looking for a place to plant my seed, he went on, opening his hand to display it. Do you have any suggestions? Well, you could try over yonder, along that ridge. There's an abandoned garden there. It'd spiff up nicely with a wee bit of work. Abandoned, Mo whispered. What do you mean abandoned? A shadow flickered across the gnome's features. Wimbleby had a bit of bad luck. Something about vine weevils. It can happen anywhere. You can't let it stop you. That's what I told him anyway. The gnome went silent. Nem shivered as if a chill had swept through the forest. It's a decent spot for a young gardener like yourself. After all, there are risks anywhere you choose. Risks. The word seemed to echo in Nem's mind. He nodded and said goodbye. Thank you. Good luck. Should we check it out? Mo said as soon as they'd made their way back to the trail. Fine weevils? Nem muttered, shaking his head. Let's find somewhere else. The sun was overhead by the time they found another potential spot. It seemed as though every clearing had been claimed, and with Nem's slow travels, plenty of the once-available patches of land had been grabbed up by his classmates that very day. Yet here was a spot that looked ideal. It was concealed by a perimeter of trees, yet near a rushing stream where a gnome could get all the water needed for a garden. Nem felt the seed in his hand, and for the first time felt a spark of hope in his chest. Maybe in a place like this. Hello there, Nem, is it? Nem's wisp of hope evaporated as a familiar gnome appeared, 
pushing a cart filled to the brim with rich soil. The confident manner in which the gnome maneuvered the cart with such purpose made it clear the patch of land was his. Oh, if only we'd gotten an earlier start. Mo, shh. Uh, nice find, Nem said. He and this gnome had never traveled in the same circles. Nem had always spent his time with the other top students. Bimini Goosewilder had not been one of them. Thank you, Bimini said, leaning against his cart. I snatched it up as soon as I could. I've been waiting for this day forever. He dumped the dirt on the ground, adding to a growing pile. Have you? Nem said, thinking how he'd been dreading this day forever. School wasn't my thing. I wanted to get out into the world, make my own way. How different we are, Nem thought to himself. He felt the seed in his hand. He imagined opening his fist and letting it fall to the ground, leaving it in Bimini's capable hands. Well, good luck, Nem said, watching Bimini deftly turn his cart around, presumably to collect more dirt. Bimini grinned. I plan to make my own luck. He nodded goodbye to Nem and pushed his cart through the trees. Did you hear that, Nem? He's going to make his own luck. What a tremendous idea, don't you agree? Nem? Nem? Nem didn't answer. He didn't even hear Mo. He was lost in thought. The trail was endless. It wended its way through the forest, cut through by lines of deer and other creatures. It seemed as though every other seven-year-old gnome had found a square of earth on which to grow a garden. Nem traveled for hours, passing by countless classmates who seemed to have taken up their new livelihoods with zeal. How were they all tackling it so confidently? Need water, please, I'm getting delirious. Soon, Mo. When? Hush. Listen, I think I hear a creak. Nem left the trail and slipped through the trees towards the sound of water rippling over rocks. The creek was nestled beneath the towering trees, sun glimmering on the surface as fish darted below. The water tumbled over boulders and swirled in whirlpools. At its edge, Nem placed Mo on a rock, and he skittered down to the water. Nem sat on a ledge, allowing his leather boots to dangle, skimming the surface. He opened his palm and studied his seed. It was lime green. Mo's words from earlier came back to him then. Every success you'll experience will come from that little guy right there. And every failure, Nem thought. He looked down at the seed on the flat of his palm and again imagined it dropping, this time falling into the water of the creek, being carried along in the current. It was so small, yet it felt like a lead weight in his hand. Nem, I'm so full I could burst. Let's go. Mo was staring at him, and Nem wondered if he could guess his thoughts. Nem closed his fist around the seed, collected his beetle, and away they went, into the trees. It was late afternoon when Nem came to the edge of the most beautiful garden he'd ever seen. Mo was asleep on his shoulder, lulled by Nem's steady unbroken wanderings. Nem took in the fruit trees, heavy with apples and pears, the many flowering bushes with hummingbirds lighting upon their petals, the rows of vegetables bursting with peppers, red cabbage, squash. The garden was astonishing in its richness, 
its complexity. Everywhere he looked, there was another wonder. Mo was still asleep, and Nem took the opportunity to do what he'd been imagining the entire day, here, while no one was around. In this most beautiful place, he could never dream of creating for himself. Nem crouched down to a bare patch of rich soil. He scraped away the top layer of earth and opened his fist. His little green seed sat innocently on his palm. There was a rustling from his shoulder, and Nem stood completely still until he was sure Mo had simply turned over in his sleep. Then, without another hesitation, lest he change his mind, he turned over his palm and watched his seed, his future, drop into the soil. Oh my, who do you think this is, T? What is this gnome up to? Nem whipped around in the direction of the voice. Mo woke up. Hmm? The tiny, quivering voice had come from the ladybug perched on the shoulder of a gnome just a few years older than Nem, who peered at him with wide eyes from a few yards away. Seven years old, looks to be. He hasn't got even a whisker on his chin. Not a single whisker. Bem, will you? Okay. Hi, the gnome said, her brow furrowing as she took in the scene before her. A young gnome crouched in her garden, a beetle on his shoulder wearing a shocked expression, and a lime green seed resting in the soil. Nem stood and dusted himself off. I, um, I can explain. T nodded slowly. I see. You want to share my garden? That's fine. That's not a... No, no, I I'm sorry. I never meant for you to know. I didn't know anyone was here. I'm not sure I understand. Nem cringed. He couldn't even do this right. He searched his mind for a clever reply. But when cornered in this way, it is always easiest to simply say the truth. I'm giving up my seed. <gasps> what? Nem? Mo cried at the same time that Bem shouted, Giving up his seed? T, what does it mean? Why would a gnome do such a thing? The gnomes shushed their companions. Mo, I'll explain later. Quiet, Bim. I'm sorry to startle you. I'll be on my way. You have a beautiful garden. Nem waved and turned to go. He strode to the edge of the garden. It's beautiful. Now. Nem stopped. The gnome's comment seemed designed to make him turn around. But he couldn't. He had to leave and never come back. Still, he stopped moving. You wouldn't have thought so a year ago, the gnome went on. Not when the vine weevils hit. Nem turned around. Vine weevils? Here? Oh, that's not even the half of it. T, remember the aphids? Oh, and remember the flood? That was scary. Remember the mysterious... Them. I'll take it from here. Okay. But your garden, Nem said. It's such a success. I've never seen one like it. A bright blue butterfly fluttered past them and landed on a petal. Success, T repeated, a thoughtful look on her face. Tell me, she said, why do you want to leave your seed here? Nem blushed. He'd never felt so anxious for his beard to grow in. The first thought that came to Nem was, that's none of your business. The urge to say it nearly overwhelmed him, but he did not, for two reasons. Firstly, 
It was not gnomish at all to say such a thing. Secondly, it wasn't true. Nem had made it T's business when he chose her garden as the place to abandon his seed. And so, what was there to say? The gnomes quietly studied one another. Gnomes don't mind silence. It's rarely awkward for them. But the beetles were restless. T, do you think he's been bit by a whisper fly? Remember what happened to old Mr. Crabbletree after being bit by the whisper fly? He didn't speak for 89 days, I heard. Nim, what are you doing? Pick up your seed and let's go. Give, Give me a, a second, second, will you? you? The gnomes said at the same time. They all chuckled. Finally, in reply to T's simple question, Nem said, I've... I've never failed before. There it was. The truth. But T... Bem said, piping up from T's shoulder. T, he says he has never failed. Oh, but he has. He has abandoned his beautiful seed. He abandoned it just there. I saw him. I saw him clearly. That's a failure on a grand scale, I say. I can't really argue with that, Mo muttered. Nem's cheeks burned with embarrassment. I wouldn't have phrased it quite that way, T said kindly. But it's true. You've had your first failure. Just now. She glanced down at Nem's seed. Then she smiled. Congratulations. Nem wrinkled his brow. Congratulations. You cannot grow a successful garden without failing over and over. You're off to a good start. Nem blinked. But in school, gardening is nothing like school, T said. In school, everything's laid out for you. All you have to do is turn in assignments, check boxes. A garden is a living experiment. The two could not be more different. Trust me, I've had plenty of failures. I've learned from each one. Before Nem could respond... T crouched down and plucked up the seed. She brushed the dirt from it. Then she strode over to Nem, and for the first time he saw that she was completely covered in a thin film of dirt. Her shirt was threadbare at the elbows. She looked like a proper garden gnome. Here. T said, gesturing for Nem to open his hand. I think you dropped this. T smiled, and she set the seed into Nem's palm. He had a strange sensation as he closed his fist around it, as though he were holding it for the very first time. T gave Nem a tour of her garden. So, if you look closely beneath there, you can see the remnants of my strawberry patch. I didn't even get to harvest one strawberry. Not a one! Bem shouted. What happened to them? Mo asked. Those dastardly squirrels ate them all. They were vicious. So very vicious in their strawberry eating. Remember, T? <laughs> I remember. Oh, and over here were the carrots. They suffered. Oh, they suffered. <laughs> they did. But I think they enriched the soil so this lovely pepper plant could grow. By the end of the tour, Nem had heard all about the drought of two years ago, the raccoons who had feasted on a whole row of cabbage, the dangers of overwatering, and the many, many pests. The moment came to say goodbye. They all knew it, even the beetles. As Nem stood at the edge of T's garden, 
which, in the late afternoon light, looked less superficially beautiful and more rich with layers of life. He noticed himself clutching his seed. T had given him no checklist to complete. She had given him no advice at all. She'd given him something much more valuable. Thank you, Nem said. You saved us, Mo shouted. She's a wise one, she is. That's why I keep her around, Bem said brightly. The two gnomes laughed at their companions. You're welcome, T said. And you're welcome to visit. Any time. I'm happy to show you my latest failed experiments. Instead of shaking hands or hugging, they nodded to one another in a gnomish fashion, and Nem walked away with his beetle on his shoulder and his seed in his hand. They fell back onto the familiar path they'd been on, but now traveled in the opposite direction. Nam, where are we going? To the spot up on the ridge. If it's available, we'll claim it. But you don't mean... The abandoned garden, yes. You heard the gnome we met. It's a decent spot for a young gardener. But the vine weevils... Mo muttered. It can happen anywhere. And when it does? Nem was quiet for a moment, the events of the day swimming in his mind. The trail was overgrown, and he had to dip beneath a tangle of vines to continue on towards his destination. Nem thought of something another gnome had said, a gnome who, despite being a lackluster student, held the kind of wisdom Nem hoped he too could have someday. Finally, he said, We'll make our own luck. They traveled on, along the winding trail through the woods. Nem had no map, but he would find the way. Failure can be a gift. If you haven't learned that yet, don't worry, you will. Little Stories for Tiny People is written, performed, and produced by me, Rhea Pector. My in-house tech director, Peter Kay, runs my website and puts my stories on the internet for all of you to enjoy. Thank you to my Little Stories premium subscribers who are making it possible for me to keep doing this. If you'd like to get more of the stories you love, access to Little Stories for Sleep, an exclusive bedtime podcast, and ad-free listening, join or gift a subscription at littlestoriespremium.com. Thank you to Libby for the super important reminder message at the beginning. And thank you, as always, for listening in.